Um, hello, everybody. My name is Lauren McGonagall. I'm a student here at the University of Limerick. I'm studying contemporary dance on the BA Performing Arts course. And I'd just like to mention that my supervisor for my final year project is Hilary Moss. So I'd like to thank her for all of her support to date. So my question that I'm going to be presenting to you today is quite simple. It's what is dance therapy? So my motivations are really quite simple. Um, I love people and I love dance and I have a great interest in psychology. So just to give you a little bit of background into my research. Um, so I've conducted um, a document analysis as qualitative research because dance therapy is quite a new profession. So um, there's not really a whole lot of academic academic um, research or literature available as of yet. So document analysis allows me to look at the more grey um, literature, such as magazines and interviews on YouTube, for example. Um, and just like any other therapy, it helps people to cope with mental health issues and to promote mental well-being. So it emerged in the United States in the 1940s and 50s. And the six major pioneers were Marion Chase, Blanche Evan, Lillian Espinach, Mary Whitehouse, Trudy Shoup, and Alma Hawkins. So um, they've all de developed their own clinical styles, um, which are still used today, but they're continuously developing. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about the terminology and the definitions because there's quite a lot of variation um, that can be seen. and. This is very confusing and there's a lack of clarity, so it really is difficult for people to understand what it is, especially because it's so new and emerging. So I've looked mainly at America, the UK and Ireland. So America is where it originated. Then it started to travel across the UK and eventually it's slowly, slowly coming into Ireland. So as you can see in America and Ireland, we have the same term. We call it dance movement therapy, but in the UK, it's dance movement psychotherapy and that's due to the fact that they were campaigning for state registration so that they could be seen as more um, of a useful career or useful pr profession that people can safely use as therapy but um, to date as far as I know they haven't been able to obtain this. Um, and you can see each country has their own association, but here in Ireland, it's a more general one. It's not specifically for dance therapy, it's for the creative arts in general. So we'll just look a little bit at the American definition. It refers to dance therapy as the psychotherapeutic use of movement to promote emotional, social, cognitive, and physical integration of the individual. So you can see here, I'll not bore you with all of the definitions, but um, what I've highlighted, these are all the common links between the three definitions across the three countries. Um, so really what's core is the integration of the being as a whole. And in my research, I've just referred to it as dance therapy because I feel it's more simplistic and it takes into account the titles across all of the countries. So we're going to look a little bit now at the approaches. So you might not know what I mean by approaches, but if you think about in psychology, um, that refers to different perspectives or ways of looking at things. So um, they have a behavioural, uh, biological and cognitive, for example, there are different approaches. And just like that in dance therapy, we have different ways of approaching the therapy sessions. So we have the Marion Chase approach. So she is one of the pioneers and she focuses on four main ideas. So body action that refers to body language and um, movement, symbolism, so that's using symbols or in this case maybe movement to represent qualities, ideas or, or thoughts more specifically. Then um, we look at the therapeutic um, movement relationship which the, the therapist tries to establish and this is a 
it happens really by a tool that we call um, mirroring. So that happens in dance as well. So it's where the therapist imitates the movement of the client so they can have like a reflection of their body movement so they can become more aware of themselves. And this can lead them to get into this rhythmic activity. And when they're in this form of rhythmic activity and they see this reflected, there can become a shift and then they can feel open to verbalize what's really going on beneath all the movement. Then we have authentic movement, which is a movement practice that is used in different settings as well as dance therapy. And it is rooted in the ideas of Mary Whitehouse, another pioneer, and was formalized by her student, Janet Adler. So it's centered around the idea of having a mover and the witness. So the mover would be the client and the witness would be the therapist. And the mover has a lot of the time they're guided to close their eyes so they have a real inward attention so that they can focus on the impulses that are coming in their body. So this could just be a kinesthetic impulse. So that's just a movement that wants to come from your body naturally and they're told to follow this or it could be from personal history because a lot of our emotions are held in our body. Um, so this is really interesting as a technique. Um, I've also mentioned a mixed approach. So there's a lot of therapists that are quite experimental because it's still very new and developing. So they're taking tools and techniques from different people. And I've mentioned five rhythms as well. Um, it's debatable where, whether it can be considered dance therapy or not. I've read in some papers that it is and others that it isn't. Um, and there's no one definition. So this is, an, again, a lack of consistency and it causes confusion. But I find it very interesting. I think if it was developed, it could be implemented into dance therapy. So it's developed by Gabrielle Roth. And she describes her work as a marriage of art and healing that's meant to catalyze wholeness through dance, song, poetry, ritual and meditation. So there's actually a lady, Catriona Nikilfadrig, who practices this in Dublin. And other than her, I've only came across three dance therapists in Ireland so far, which is very, very few. Um, so the five rhythms refers to five rhythms of movement. Um, so flowing, staccato, um, chaos, lyrical and stillness. I'll not go into detail because I just want to give you a brief idea of as much as I can in this short time. Um, but it's really a process to help the client to build, let their emotion build through the movement and to be revealed at the end if needs be. Um, so now the tools and techniques, you can see the ones of blue I've already mentioned. Lab and movement analysis and the Kestensburg movement profile um, are tools used um, to really assess and look at the patterns and qualities of a person's body language and movement. Then kinesthetic empathy is the ability to empathize with someone um, just by observing their movement really. Um, creativity, we can understand that, and choreography. I've mentioned mirroring. Um, it really develops from looking at the client's posture first and Trudy Shoup, again another pioneer, believes that that's of great significance and then when that leads into mirroring, which I have explained, mirroring can be then used as a tool to assess interpersonal synchronicity. So this is this means um, the ability to sync your movement to someone else's. So it could be as simple as walking together with your friend and being able to keep in time with them. It's something we do without realizing, but it helps us to socially connect to people. And on the right, I've got here some more that are not so commonly used, but for example, the polyvagal informed DMT that comes from a more psychological approach. Um, so. I really want to thank everybody for coming today. I just wanted to distill all of the basic fundamentals of dance therapy in one place because I find in my research that there's so far 
nowhere that I can find all the basics about what it is in one place. And I think that would be really nice to have. There's also no formal training course here in Ireland yet. So it's going to be really hard to develop the profession here unless we do that. And I really believe there should be a place, especially during the times that we have now of a pandemic when we need as much help and support as we can. So knowing that there's another form of alternative therapy is great. And I'll just set you off with a note. If you just set people in motion, they'll heal themselves. And that was Gabrielle Roth said that. So that's my bibliography if you want to take a deeper look into anything. And thank you, everybody, for your time and attention. And I hope you found something of interest to you.